What I love best about the French is their approach to pleasure. For them, it's not just a luxury. It's an everyday necessity, even when it comes to food. Pork chops with red onion confit and a parsley salad on the side. Bacon and egg salad on warm bitter greens. Pea green soup. Omelette de pommes de terre, an omelette with crisp fried potato. And tartine, baguette toast with all sorts of tasty toppings. So that's why when you're cooking for one, especially if you are the one, you have to know how to treat yourself. French food for one, which is a rare thing. Usually it's a very convivial cuisine and you have lots of people around, but it's a normal place too and sometimes you're all by yourself. So you don't cut back, you make yourself something really good to eat. I'm going to make a pork chop with onion confit using red onions, which are nice and sweet. Confit is a word you see a lot on French menus. Usually it's associated with duck confit, which means duck that's cooked down and preserved. But you can confit anything, you can confit vegetables. It's used loosely like that. It just means cooking things down until they're not quite jammy, but very, very well done. Now some salt and pepper. It's very comforting to hear onions frying and smell them frying. Good companionship when you're by yourself. These just need to be left alone for about 25 minutes, stirring occasionally, until they become stringy and glistening and deep, deep red. So while those fry, I'll get my pork chop going. Nice big, fat, juicy chop. Small cuts like this are ideal when you're cooking for one. While that's getting hot, I'll just season the chop. both sides, salt and pepper, and my little trick learned from a French chef, just a little pinch of sugar, because it helps give it an even nicer golden caramelization. That needs about seven minutes per side and it will be just right. The only thing I wish is that I had some salad. Parsley. Don't think I'm crazy. Parsley actually makes a great salad. And whenever I'm feeling a little weak, I love eating parsley leaves. Perks me up. It's nice and strong, and it will really go well against the sweetness of the onion confit. A little bit of shallot, and I don't need too much. I just want a bit of sharpness. And then a garlic clove. And that too, I don't want too much of. The taste of it should be just a whisper, not a yell. Now, a little lemon zest. I love lemon zest. Actually, quickest dressing, just a squirt of lemon, and a drizzle of oil. Fleur de sel, and my pepper. Finally, a bit of Parmesan. So I'm just going to grate over in little shavings. Ooh, great. Look at how much that is caramelized. Now, check my onions. I'm just going to deglaze with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And as soon as that cooks off, I can turn it off and taste. Mm, delicious. 
Okay, and my top's done too. Aren't you? Perfect. Now, a plate. And in keeping with the French pursuit of pleasure at all times. Mmm, and that chop is grilled just right. And I also love a bacon and egg salad and a very speedy pea soup. best lessons we can learn from the French is that pleasure is not frivolous. It's good for your health. That's why even when I'm eating alone, I like to treat myself. At least I make an effort. Something I love to eat when I'm by myself is a warm frise salad with bacon dressing and a poached egg on top. I'll get my egg in a ramekin so I can gently dip it into the water. Lower in the egg. Let the white just set for a second. And then you can work with two spoons and wrap the white around the yolk a little bit. And then just lift it out with a slotted spoon and set it aside while you do the salad. You can let it cook as long as you like. You don't want the yolk hard, hard. I like it when it sort of spills all over the greens when I crack through it, so I'm just going to leave it at that. You shouldn't just think of bacon and eggs as breakfast food. So that's good enough for me. Now I want those sticky bits, so I'm going to lift them up with a Splash of vinegar. Now I'm going to add some olive oil, because this is going to be my dressing right in the pan. I'm turning off the heat. Just enough to make a light dressing for my greens, which I'll turn in there in a minute. In fact, I think I'll put some pepper in right now. And a little bit of salt, fleur de sel, but not too much because there's bacon and it's already salty. And now I'll get my greens ready. This is frise. The only part I don't want is just the core. I'm just going to spin this dry. And then as much frise as I want to eat, turn quickly in this warm dressing. This is such a classic French salad, you see it everywhere. Hot frise with a poached egg. And then right onto the salad. And a little fleur de sel on the egg. And pepper. And a fork! Isn't that magnificent? I just love watching the yolk spill over the greens. It's a perfect combination. You get chewy, smoky bacon and slightly bitter greens and that nice, rich egg. It's perfect food for one. Mm. The French feel very strongly about always using the freshest possible ingredients, but sometimes they cheat too. Sometimes you have to. When you're alone and there's nothing else to eat, a few frozen peas aren't going to kill you. And you can make the quickest soup with them and it will look beautiful. I do it for myself alone, but I also do it in desperate moments when I need a first course for a dinner party. It takes five minutes. Then just enough water to cover. And then heat. Two 
puree. Water and everything. And then just pour it back into the pot. It's so bright green. Gently, gently reheat it. And stir in a little cream. Make sure you give yourself a nice bowl. Couple of sprigs of mint. Mm. Peas and cream make me feel like a princess. I used to have a French boyfriend who always made me his special potato omelet. He's not around anymore, but I have the recipe. kitchen shop in Paris. Floor to ceiling of copper pots, molds for tarts, cookie cutters, whisks, rolling pins, everything you could ever want you'll find here. Just look at this place. Floor to ceiling. Oh, bonjour. 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 Très bien. Très bien <laughs> look at all these crepe pans. Every size you could want. These are interesting. These are for uh, bread. These are more decorative. You can tell because it's a lighter fabric. But these are for really proofing bread. It's thicker and it's treated so that the bread doesn't get mold on it. These are the best vegetable peelers because you can get right in there. Look at the size of this. These are all porcelain things here. Terrines, gratin dishes of all kinds, ramekins, and I love terracotta anything. In France, people take the time to treat themselves well, especially when it comes to food. I have a great recipe for potato omelet that I learned from a boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. It's a great omelet, it's very rustic. He was from the center of France, the Auvergne, and it's very rugged there, and this is food to match. Big, hearty chunks of potato, bacon, onions, eggs. Good to bolster your spirits on a cold winter's night. First, I'm gonna start with bacon. So just a couple of slices of bacon. Not too, too much. You don't have to measure anything, you just want the right balance between bacon and potato and onion. I'm only going to chop half an onion. The idea is that you just cook each ingredient separately and then add them together at the end. That way everything is perfectly cooked. I'm keeping the fat behind. Now I'll just add a little butter for the onions. Wait till the onions are soft before you add the garlic because the garlic just needs a minute. If you leave it in there right at the beginning, you'll burn it and that's not nice. Just adding the garlic one minute. Now I'm going to take these out too. And I want those sticky bits from the pan, so I'm going to deglaze with some balsamic vinegar. That was Philippe's trick. And just boil down the vinegar until it's a nice sweet glaze. And when the vinegar disappears, a little bit of olive oil and butter. And now for my potato. Star ingredient. Cute cubes. You don't want them to burn 
but you also want to cook them long enough because they should be really golden and crisp all on the outside and nice and soft in the center. Get them all nicely coated. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper right now. See how nice these are? They're all golden and crisp on the outside and, and soft inside. Now everything else can go back in. The onions and garlic and the bacon. There's one of me, but that doesn't mean I can't have a happy couple of eggs. And then just stir them with a fork to break up the yolk. And then pour it over the potatoes. And give them a quick stir so they all get coated. Just cover it to finish it. See, that's just right. That's perfectly set, but there's still a little left on top. that the potatoes stay crisp. The moral of this story is never leave a French boyfriend without getting his recipes first. And the classic, classic French food for dining alone is tartine. Delicious toppings on tiny French bread toasts. French are famous for their five hour lunches, but that doesn't mean they don't also enjoy dining alone. I'm going to make tartine, which is one of the best French solo dinners. It's just toast with little toppings, but when you do them right, they're so good. I'm going to make three different toppings for myself, starting with fava beans. They live inside these almost sleeping bag-like pouches. It's like little heads sleeping on downy pillows. So I have some boiling water here. I'm just going to add some salt. They just need blanching for a few minutes. Icy cold water going on top, and that's going to help set the color and stop the cooking. I'm just going to hold on to that because I need more than just one topping. I love also mushroom croutes. Got shiitakes, I have button mushrooms, I have cremini mushrooms. In fact, the whole point of tartine really is to use up what you have and be creative with it. I'm gonna put in some garlic too. And for instant sauce, you can add a splash of white wine. And then thin it with a good glob of creme fraiche, that great tangy but not too sour cream, nice and thick and rich and fat. Now just a little lift with some parsley and a little squirt of lemon. Perfect, now I can build my little tartine. I'm going to make three tartines. The word tartine comes from the verb tartiner, which means to spread over. This isn't exactly a spread, but it's the same idea. These nice tender fava beans, I'm going to mash with a fork. Just a little olive oil. Nice fruity olive oil on very springy, fresh fava beans is a delicious combination. They need a little salt. And I want to put on some mint. Maybe a little squirt of lemon too. And now to build my tartine. 
I think a little goat cheese under those fava beans will be just right because it's so fresh and tangy. And then keep on the favas. Now my mushrooms just needs a little decoration. And last but not least, this is the easiest. You have some bought tapenade, jet black. I love tapenade because it's so easy to make. You just crush up some olives and garlic and anchovies and you can keep it in the fridge forever and it's a perfect spread. Tomato slice on top and a bit of basil. A dribble of olive oil and a grind of pepper. Dining alone is not so bad with a few French tips. I've made a pork chop with a red onion confit and a parsley salad on the side. Frise salad with a warm bacon dressing and a poached egg on top. My favorite green pea soup. A potato omelet rustic full of potatoes, onions and bacon. And my favorite little solo dining treat, tartine. Like Luckless, tonight Laura dines with Laura.